Okay, so Ask Aubrey of the Twitter shared this screenshot from this man. Now, this man does not like punctuation, so we're going to try to get through this. He says, man, imagine if all men just decided to not date, how women would be affected by it. Would be astounding if all guys just decided to not text their crush or girl of interest. If all guys decided just to go to the gym and make the long effing bread, how women would just fall to their knees because of loneliness and lack of attention. Women always gaslighting, gaslighting and making up lies and excuses for these behaviors like we're supposed to accept how they are when a man can simply get $100 and go do something y'all are holding back for some reason from the nice guy, but not from Chad, like if it was some Indiana Jones treasure. Now, we do need to go back and decipher this and add some punctuation for ourselves, but it's the same, the typical thing. Now, what is interesting about this is that many of these people say similar things. I could say the dust is global all the time because many of these people say pretty much the exact same thing, just um, different words mixed in here and there, like when this type says Chad, the other variety says Pookie and Ray Ray. Y'all know what I mean. And he's just like, in some instances, they talk about body counts and women being 304s, but then also they are trying to use counter control and say, well, now we'll just use $100 and go get me um, a lady of the night. That is what they're saying. <laughs> but these people are so very interesting that they keep not living in reality and in our current reality. Women also go to work. Women also have their own effing bread. And women are not going to fall to their knees simply because of loneliness. Women are creating community. And these people are not creating community. They're not creating community amongst themselves. Anyways, so at this particular point, if they are so angry because so many of these people parrot the exact same thing, the verbal vomit is always the exact same thing verbal vomit, the regurgitation of the talking points. So at this point, why don't they take their $100 and go find them a lady of the night instead of thinking that going to get a $25 meal with a woman is going to equate to getting some nookie or getting a woman that's like, oh my God, thank you for rescuing me from the loneliness that I was feeling. Some of the comments on the thread, this woman says, what men don't realize is that if every man decided even for one day to ignore women and not touch them, talk to them, etc., women would spend the day fully indulging in countless activities all day and night without fear. This person said, most women wouldn't even notice it. It's not like we all stand around staring at the phone thinking, ring, damn you, ring. <laughs> Lee Violet says the projection on his part is outstandingly obvious. He thinks this is what women would do because this is how he feels when he is ignored by women. Little does he know, most women are happiest and healthiest when single. I personally would consider it a blessing. This person says I'd go for a lovely relaxing walk in the woods alone. I'd stay until sunset. I'd catch a tube after 11 p.m. and walk home from the station in heels. This man says, my wife hates three places that she loves to go. Cafes, supermarkets, gyms. That's where she gets hit on the most. We ended up getting a coffee machine. I used my catering company to order produce. And the gym in our building eventually has a female-only section. This person says, exactly. The greatest advantage of being really old is the peaceful indifference of males. Jenny says, I can't even decode what he is spewing with the lack of punctuation. I feel you, Jenny. I have learned how to understand what they're saying. It is a, it's a gift. Um, Janine says, let me guess, another guy who was rejected. Go ahead, buddy. Don't date any women. We'll wait for your tantrum to be over. Mrs. Hat says, there's a reason um, lesbians exist. You, my good sir, are probably it. G-Bar says, did aliens land on a dinosaur in this fantasy? <laughs> This person shared this um, screenshot, men suffer in silence, then why am I always hearing about it? That is a good one. I should probably um, crop this and post it somewhere. This person says, oh no, I remember this math problem from high school. There, the number of ready and willing eggplants will always be greater than the number of ready and willing cats. So eggplant is greater than cats equals mad person. 
<laughs> Boy math. Can people please, for the love of everything, learn the difference between there, there, and there? So many people should have been left behind. This person says, I like how MGTOW works as both men going their own way and men getting triggered over women. Women just living. Um, this person says, you are already not dating because women don't like you. You just want to pretend that it was your idea. Um, this person says, most women are just fine without dating. Men cup, cook up this elaborate scenarios as to why women wouldn't be and then posture to all of the other men reading their tripe. <laughs> Bob says, I'm mostly waiting for his punctuation to arrive. Lily says, maybe he could just use the time he'd otherwise be annoying women to learn about homonyms, grammar, punctuation, and spelling. We're glad to give you all the time you need, hun. Um, this person says, make effing bread. Do what with $100? I'm confused, but I don't mind never solving these mysteries since he's going away forever. Lee says, imagine if all men united and stopped showing any interest in women. Boy, that would show them. <laughs> all right. So another person not going their own way and being loud about it. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, share. Okay, we need to have this conversation because so many times these men's jokes, their pranks, their mean humor is rooted in some of their truths and how they feel about women. So we need to have this discussion because women, I want you to stop second guessing yourself when these men are being mean spirited and then couching it in humor or it's a joke or you just need to lighten up. Stop accepting it because their humor is a lot of the time what they want to say. They just chuckle a little bit. This woman says, tonight I broke up with my boyfriend because he kept joking about unaliving me. She says, during our first few weeks of dating, he joked too much for a comfort that he was going to unalive and dismember me and dispose of my body. Maybe out of context, I'm being dramatic. He's very sarcastic and has dark humor, but to me, it wasn't funny and caused me anxiety because I know the statistics. I talked to him about this. I told him repeatedly, stop joking about unaliving me. He kept on with the jokes until I finally told him that those jokes literally scare me. He apologized and seemed to feel bad that his jokes made me scared of him. Tonight, we were over three hours late to meet with his brother to play games, watch movies, and eat dinner. When I was talking to him about us being late, I noticed he sighed deeply, clenched his fist, looked down at it as if he were making the conscious choice to not punch me. Then, as I was saying goodbye to his brother, he comes into the room and says she should say her permanent goodbyes. I asked him, what the F? He said it was a joke. I asked, how's it funny? What's the punchline? Please explain to me how that was supposed to be funny. He couldn't answer. I didn't want to get in the car with him. I walked off and thankfully my roommate picked me up and drove me home. He called later and I told him I'm done. He's a good man other than for the jokes about unaliving me. We talked about and agreed that he wouldn't joke about unaliving me anymore, but then he did it again tonight and doubled down that it was just a joke and that actually I'm the problem. I started telling him again about how women are often unalived by their husbands and boyfriends, and that's why the jokes bother me so much, but he interrupted to say, F you. So I hung up and blocked him, and all of this really ducks my ducks because my roommate, okay, I'm sorry, it's supposed to say sucks. All of this really sucks because my roommates say I should just talk it out with him and give him another chance because they can tell I really like him and he really likes me. But I already did that. I thought we were past the homicide jokes. Then he did it again tonight while he was angry with me. And it caused me this awful feeling in my gut that I needed to not get in the car with him and to get away from him. I've had boyfriends and male friends in the past. None of them have ever made jokes about unaliving me and dismembering me, especially multiple times after I told them to stop. Have you had friends, boyfriends that make jokes like this? Where is the humor in this? What would you do in this situation? Number one, she did the right thing in blocking him. But number two, or maybe I should have said like point zero, if a person is joking about unaliving you in the first stages, ladies, ladies that are still dating, don't, uh, don't dismiss this. This is not something that you brush off. If somebody is um, joking about 
harming you in any way. It's not a joke. Leave that person alone. Don't continue to date these people. Listen to that gut. Don't listen to these friends. Don't listen to these type of friends that she has, these friends, these roommates. This is not the type of relationship you want to be in. These are not people that are worthy of your time. Okay, but that's me. Block, leave these people alone. Don't give them any energy. You cannot be a good man who is joking about unaliving somebody and dismembering somebody. That is very specific. Okay, some of the comments. You've already given him chances. He agreed to change, then he broke his word. So not only is he verbally abusive and potentially violent, he also breaks his word. You did nothing wrong. There is no humor in what he said. And abusers frequently excuse their abuse in the two ways he did. First, they say it was a joke. If you don't accept that, they try to blame it on you. You don't want to become a statistic. Well, there are plenty of men out there who will never threaten to unalive you. You have done exactly the right thing. Don't feel bad about anything you've done. My one piece of old woman advice to you is to be very strict around dating men when it comes to threats, joke or not. If a man threatens you in any way, tell him that if he does it again, it's over. Don't tolerate any kind of threats or violence ever. If the man is actually a danger, he will see tolerance as a sign he can violate your boundaries without consequences. Absolutely amazing comment right there. This person um, gives her the link for Why Does He Do That by Lundy Bancroft. I have talked about that on my pages before. That is definitely a good book to read. Um, this person says, I really need to take uh, find the time to read this. I've seen it posted a lot because it's something that you really should read, even if you've never been in a relationship that has been violent or threatening. It'll help you see the signs in other people's relationships or whatever. That way you can warn somebody else, even if you never come across a person like that. This person pulls out the comment, he's a good man other than the jokes about unaliving me. This person says, doesn't sound like it. Repeatedly pushing someone's boundaries when they've expressed discomfort makes them sh by default. And the way he lashed out at you makes it even worse. Regardless of all his supposed amiable qualities, that goes out the window with this sort of behavior. A joke is supposed to be funny for both parties. Jokes about unaliving your partner are very creepy and weird. You're supposed to know your audience. Exactly. He is not a good person. He is... Yes, let him make those jokes in his own brain away from you. Be safe. Y'all jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. I was sent this post. I am thankful for the people that send me these things so I don't have to search for every single thing. But this was reposted on the Twitter and she posted it in the Red Pill Women subreddit. So she is a Red Pill woman looking for her Red Pill man. She said, I can't help but feel lied to by Red Pillars. Help me understand. I thought I'd done everything right. I kept a low body count, can cook, clean, am submissive, dress modestly, don't have any social media, don't have male friends, don't make out with random people, don't go to parties. I'm younger in my early 20s and dating um, older, mid to late 30s. Edit to add, also decently pretty, skinny, cute, don't have trouble finding dates, getting attention, meeting men that will commit. Recently went out with somebody that seemed like the perfect gentleman on the first date and turned into someone completely different by date two once he realized he wasn't getting laid. I hadn't checked before, um, but this same guy, 37-year-old man, follows women I'm assuming that he matched with on dating apps that wear very revealing clothing, go to nightclubs, are closer to his age, post wall, <laughs> clearly have not kept a low body count, and post bikini pictures on their social media, which is exactly what red pillars say is wrong with modern women. Guy insists he's looking for a long-term relationship, supposedly wants marriage and children, but is matching with women like that. I think what shocked me is several guys that I match with follow this girl on social media. Clearly, we all use the same dating app and are around the same location. But if guys um, take a liking to me, say they want something serious and committed, but also like women like her, what is the point of the red pill? Just venting at this point. 
my girl Supreme of the West 4B movement created this um, this graphic. It's called Pick a Pick Me. I'm going to dive into this deeper a little in a little bit, but it is hilarious that these women simply think they have internalized the misogyny so much that they really believe that if they act not like those other girls, that they will get picked. It is hilarious. She is incredulous that she did all of the things on the checklist and she's still not getting picked. Women are going to have to lay aside that internalized misogyny and acting like acting so pure is the ticket. No, just be yourself because these dudes, they will have they will regurgitate all of these talking points and act precisely the opposite. <laughs> So this was on Twitter. So I'm going to do some of the Twitter comments, but I did go over to the subreddit, the red, the red pill women subreddit. So red, red film future says, yes, all they do is lie. They don't want these triad wives only so they can use and abuse them. Still cheat. That's it. This um, Nima says men love Jezebels. Don't ever be confused about it. Lead the life you want. Um, Hannah says, because people aren't who they say they are. They are what they do. Exactly. She says, look at their actions. Exactly. These men are cosplaying as traditional men. They're still men. So they would do better to just choose the women they want. And these women need to accept that these men lie. <laughs> so this woman didn't complete her sentence, but she says, I learned the hard way too. I was a virgin until 24. The guys that complain about loose women are the ones most drawn to them. They're trying to convince themselves that they don't like them, but they do. I think that that is true. Now, this man says, this man, men's right activist says, my take is the guy says he's looking for a long-term relationship to her because he knows saying this, he has a higher chance to sleep with her. Meanwhile, he really is just looking to sleep around. Anyways, that's one singular man. This woman is basing her whole verdict on. So, but keep in mind that a lot of women are saying this. A lot of women are not getting picked, even though they are listening to the red pillars. There are women that try to check off the, the little boxes that red pillars say that they want, but they're still not getting picked. Thomas says, or red pillars have the right ideas, but lots are hypocrites. They say the right things, but are slaves to their lusts. How will women know who is who? How will women know they're, if they're cosplaying? And this is why when men say, or men and women say, choose better. How do you choose better when people are lying to you? How are women supposed to know, especially inexperienced women? How are inexperienced women supposed to know when these people are lying? Okay, so I told you I went into the Red Pill Women subreddit. She's um, This person is pulling out if guys, so guys plural. She says, this was a single guy. Dating is a numbers game. You sound like you might be counting too hard on individual dates. I recommend casting your net widely and going on lots of dates in the next month just to warm yourself up to the whole concept of vetting. Discovering someone was inconsistent with what he wanted on the second date instead of the second month or, God forbid, the second year should be seen as a plus, not something that causes you to question your entire strategy. But if this woman is going on a bunch of dates, she's going to be labeled as a 304 as well. And then she gets caught up in looking like those other girls. The OP says, I totally 100% get that. It was the fact that I looked at her followers following and saw other guys that I had matched with and decided I wasn't interested in for some arbitrary reason and had expressed interest in committed relationships. Follow her and I'm assuming match with her. That made me question everything. Were they all lying or inconsistent? Were they just desperate and taking in any female in front of them? It was just odd. She and I are very different people and supposedly they are attracted to red pill compatible um, behavior could be turned on by hers. But clearly this isn't happening. She continues with, I'm going on other dates and currently talking to two other people. Can't juggle more than that at once. Just felt odd and weird. Ugh. That's because you think that you're special. 
Okay, this person says, supposedly the men attracted to my red pill compatible behavior would be turned off by hers. Um, that's the part she's pulling out. And she says, it sounds like you may have thought that sharing a goal in dating, looking for a serious relationship, meant that these men shared your values, not seeking or encouraging promiscuity. The reality is someone who doesn't share your values can be open to both, totally down for fun but open to serious relationships too. They may be turned off by her in the context of a serious relationship, but not for, not at all for fun. So that is just um, this one woman giving this person advice, but the woman, the OP is totally not like those other girls. She has internalized that she is special because she's skinny, she's young, um, she has a low body count but she's still getting treated the exact same way. Anyways, you guys jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Another important conversation that women need to have, and it's too bad that women have to deal with this. She says in the DoorDash subreddit, Dasher sits outside of my home and sends creepy message. DoorDash does nothing. Help. So her DoorDasher, um, Iraqli, says, you look very beautiful, and he's sitting outside of her home. She says in the caption, I'm new here, so maybe someone can help me. Yesterday, we ordered DoorDash. After the Dasher delivered my food, he sat, out of my, sat outside of my home and sent me a message through the app telling me that I look very beautiful. I was immediately creeped out because it's so inappropriate and unprofessional. I contacted customer service through the app, which was a joke, and they basically said they were escalating the issue and someone would get back to me. They also said they hoped he doesn't come back when I expressed my concern. This morning, I tweeted about the experience and DoorDash Help responded to my tweet and told me to contact them. When I did, they said they blocked the driver from delivering to me and would launch an internal investigation, but I wouldn't hear anything else about it. I'm sorry, but I don't find this to be sufficient. This man knows where I live. This man may be doing this to other women. I don't want to sound paranoid, but I'm a victim of SA and Pew Pew violence. I just moved here last year because I was assaulted at Pew Pew Point and my father was shot by men who broke into my previous home. I finally felt safe and now I don't. I have PTSD and this incident has totally triggered it. If this guy is creepy enough or dumb enough to behave this way with a customer, I don't know what else he's capable of. I also don't want anyone else being subjected to his unwanted advances. I hope I don't sound crazy, but this is really unsettling and upsetting to me. Does anyone have any advice? And what is crazy is that this woman has gone through so many of these things and gone through them, I presume, with men. But so many people would jump on her for having this reaction, this automatic reaction to somebody doing this and want to say, but not all men. And just like the bear discussion that we had a little while ago, folks would completely understand if they were attacked by a bear, if a person was attacked by a bear, and then that person became defensive or triggered or apprehensive about being around bears. But this woman has gone through these things and folks still want to say stuff like, but not all men. Obviously, we know not all, but how do you know which one? This person says, like, this annoys me. Instead of blocking the dasher from just your orders and continuing to allow him to do this to others, how about they deactivate his butt off the platform? It probably isn't his account any damn way. He could just buy another account. It's frustrating. Um, the OP says, I think I'm done with the service completely after this. This person says, stick to Grubhub, probably the most trusted of the two, and Uber Eats, which requires frequent periodical face scans to ensure it's the person using the actual account. Well, that's good to know. I didn't know that. That's cool. Mother Mary says, this is good to know. I got downvoted to hell a while back on here for not being comfortable with dashes, etc., using other people's accounts to complete deliveries. I guess that made me a Karen for wanting some reliability in who I'm working with. Um, this person says, check out what happened to Angie Harmon. You are not a Karen. Um, so I don't really know what happened to Angie Harmon, and I presume something with the doggy. Okay, so this person says, happened to me in a lift. The guy was like 45, complimenting me, offering to give me free rides in the future, telling me what he could provide for a woman, said something about having big hands and feet and for me to connect the dots. I couldn't get out of the car fast enough, and later on, he texted 
to me, this is Tommy, save my number. I reported him and they told me Lyft doesn't give their passengers numbers to drivers, so how did he get it? And they would make sure he didn't pick up my rides in the future. I just stopped using those apps. They don't care. Get some mace, get some weapons, learn to fight. It's not safe out there. When women are doing this whole opting out of interacting with these folks and people are clutching their pearls and wondering why, it's this type of thing. People are not taking women's safety seriously. The OP said, it would be great to live in a world where we can just exist without being sexualized. And then Mayshower says, all the comments under this are atrocious. Don't listen to them, OP. You are co completely right. I'm sorry you have to deal with this. Um, Thought Center says, I appreciate the warning. I'd rather not open the rest of the reply chain after reading your comment. Outrageous Course said, it would be a paradise in a world without disgusting men. Okay. So, you know, under her comment, not all. It's disgusting people. It's not all men. It's not all men. Yeah. So just like this person, I'll just sum it up. It would be a paradise in a world without disgusting people. Sincerely, all the men and women who have been, um, who have also been abused by women. So not all men. And what about the women? So just putting that out there. That is how these people want to hijack and deflect that. Yes, not all, but a lot. Anyways, I just wanted to pull this out there, um, let them know that this is also happening and there is still so many reasons, even for the women that have not decided to completely stop interacting with them. But all of these women in these posts show daily why women are pulling back a little more, a little more, and a little more daily. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this one. If you made it this far and you haven't followed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button.